Allowing the breath to flow for a few moments. Start to establish a breath that will work for our body today. Usually, uh, when I don't have a mask on, I'm doing in through the nose, out through the mouth. So you can check that out for a moment with your mask to see if that works. Always know if you get lightheaded um, and you just like, you feel like you're gonna faint or get anxiety, anything like that, you can always drop it down for a little while to get you some fresh air and then bring it back up when your body feels good. That's always gonna be fine for me. But just see if there is a breath that's possible right now with a mask. Just a nice inhale through the nose, perhaps. Exhale out the mouth. Establishing a little bit of extra depth, especially going down into the belly. And to <laughs> you're good, you're good. <laughs> and to start establishing an intention for our class today, the intention that we're building is the idea of gratitude, as if the, allowing our heart to flow and allowing our blood to pump and allowing our muscles to work. We're imagining that that's opening ourselves up to allow a little bit more space for that, that idea of gratitude. And so that'll be the idea that leads us onward. And so um, we'll start off with the knees coming into the chest. As we rock around on that low back, imagine that we're creating space in the low back for extra gratitude to hold itself. And notice that there's a lot of things that are crazy about life right now, and you can say that pretty much always. There's always something that feels crazy going on, but there's still something to be grateful for. So take a moment to think of even just very simple gratitude. Think of, you know, I'm grateful for a vehicle or legs that work to get me places. I'm grateful for um, technology for lights for just all sorts of things that we have there's so much to be grateful for and the more we look for gratitude the more we not only feel better but the more gratitude we find and so from here let's start off our first working exercise the legs start to straighten all the way up to the sky the hands can go on the floor or my personal preference is to tuck the thumbs under the hips because that helps the low back easily stay completely connected to the ground. And so from here, let's start off very slow and very small movements. Let the toes travel downward a few inches and then come back up to the start. So an exhale each time they go down. Inhale back up. And then start to make that just a few extra inches beyond what you were doing. And we're very slowly changing the difficulty, adding a few more inches again. Maybe each time you go, it's like you're adding one more inch. So sometimes it's nice to gaze just beyond the toes to the space that you're in so that you can trace based on your vantage point, how low the toes are going. Maybe a little bit lower next time. And a little bit lower. And just keep on going. If there's a point where you feel in your body that's a little bit too much, back back off to a, a nice kind of knot, even just a couple of inches at the top going up and down. And maybe by about now, you're finding whatever the low spot is for this without the low back having to ever lift at all. We're making sure that low back is connected to the ground because that makes us include a few extra abdominal muscles than we would have otherwise. 
And so from whatever your low spot is today, let's take five more reps. Nice and slow. Here is five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Good. Plant the feet down onto the ground. You can throw out your hands. And let the knees do a few nice windshield wipers. Left and right. The next time both knees fall over to the left, let them stay. Maybe the left ankle comes up to rest on the right thigh, but if that hurts the knee at all, make it drop right back down. No need to put too much pressure. And then drop this ankle. Both knees tilt over to the right. Maybe right foot goes up. The other one, Cindy? Yeah, there you go. Drop that ankle down. Do another two or three sets of windshield wipers to each side, making sure the knees are comfortable here. And then when the knees are feeling pretty good, plant the feet just hip distance wide. We're taking bridge pose here. So plant around the floor next to the hips. With your inhale, lift the hips and then roll up one vertebrae at a time. Exhale, roll back down. And as we continue a few more rounds like that, lifting and lowering, see if it's possible to make the breath slow down even just a little bit more. Even though we're doing strengthening stuff, we don't have to necessarily rush through it. See if you can literally feel one bump of the vertebrae lift in the next, and then setting it back down in that chain reaction as well. Taking three more after the third one will stay lifted at the top. So here's three. Two. And one. Stay lifted. If you can clasp hands under your back, take that clasp. Trying to lift higher if you can. Knees still squeezing inward. One more inhale, exhale, release the hands, roll back down. And then from here, with the hips on the ground, reach the arms up overhead. We'll start to warm up our shoulders doing a similar motion. So allow the inhale to bring the arms down and the hips rise. Exhale, hips down, arms rise. Inhale, hips. Exhale, arms up. Taking five. Four. Three. And one. Good. 
Arms drop back down by your sides. Lift the hips up one more time. And then this is a game of inches. Just the hips go up and down an inch. We're gonna go for up to 10 of those pulses. So when you're ready, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, relax back down, slide the right leg long to the ground. Left leg goes straight up to the sky, clasp the hands behind the leg, and just let it stretch for a moment. So either work the ankle loose, or really extend the leg straight to get deep into those muscles on the back side. We get a nice break, because our muscles need it in this moment. Good. And then as you release your hands, drop your hands back down by your sides on the, the ground. I'm going to give you two options for this next one. The first option is to allow that left leg to do complete leg circles. You go in one direction, stay clockwise, and then immediately reverse and counterclockwise. If you have any sort of hip and sacral problems that make that not feel good for you, what you're going to do is sit and lower and lift the leg. Okay, so choose your variation and let's see it. I like to do my exhale and you kind of look, leg drops down. Inhale as it rises back up. Three more to each side. Two. One. Good, see if you can slowly lower the leg to rest on the ground. When left is down, right leg, leg gets to go up. Just use your hands to help it for a moment. You can do the ankle rolls or you can really deeply extend the back of the leg straight. Whatever is going great. for the second thing. See if you can drop your hands, either do up and down motions or do the circle. If you're doing the circle with me, go now. Remember to switch the direction each time. Three. One. Good work. Slowly lower the leg all the way down. Okay. So from here, reach your arms up, like right above you, that space floating above your body. And let's take a moment to pay attention to the shoulders. So we're going to go back and forth between the fingers, lifting as tall as they possibly can. Feel how in, your, in between your shoulder blades, there's a lot of space. The shoulder blades are trying to space themselves apart as far as possible. And then to contrast that, plug the shoulder blades directly into the ground. It's like you're even trying to touch the back side of the shoulder up the earth. And then inhale, float them up. Exhale, touch them down. Feel how even just a couple of rounds starts to warm up the shoulders. Fun breathing. Good, and then the next time the shoulders rest down, leave them down, lift the legs back up to the sky, and we're going to try to touch the arms up toward the toes. This time the head can lift. 
And then relax the shoulders back down, even pressing the shoulders directly into the earth. With the inhale, the shoulder blade is spreading away. Exhale, they're squeezing together. Five. Four. stuck under the hips. We're either going to lower the legs up and down like what we started with, or if your hips are okay with doing circles, we're going to do corkscrews. Similar to before, but with both legs. So both legs do a, a circle clockwise and then counterclockwise. If you ever need to make it easier, let the knees be a little bit bent. That'll make it easier for you. You also have control over how deep the circle goes. It could go to hover above the ground as long as the low back doesn't lift, or it could be the size of a nice little basketball up in the sky. So you choose whatever feels good. Keep on breathing. Good, yeah, take breaks if you need them. That's always fine. Let's go for three more. Two, and one. Amazing, good work. Let's allow left leg to slide long to the ground, have hands clasp around the right knee, and just gently let this right knee get pulled in for the shoulders. The right hand takes over the right knee and the leg gets to go wide for a moment. The knee lifts back up, the left hand takes over and then you take it as deep into a twist as feels good for your body. So maybe it's partway there or maybe you're getting closer and closer to the ground. It just depends on what feels good for the spine and also what allows the right shoulder to stay on the ground still. Okay, the hips down, just slide the right leg long on the ground. Left knee comes in, hug it in for a moment. The knee goes wide in the left hand. and then start to head into the twist. You have complete control over this. You decide what feels good. shoulders and extend the arms to hover right above the ground. From here 10 times we're going to do little pulses where we get the head a little bit closer to the knees and then relax back away just a little bit. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 
two, one. Hold on to the knees, rest the head down, take a few breaths. If you ever wanna do knee circles in these breaks, that's also fine. We'll start adding little aspects of difficulty to what we just did. And know that you do not have to add any levels if you're completely content with exactly what we just did, those little pulses in and out. We're still building the core no matter what level you choose. So if you want to increase it by one level, what we do is take that same curled in shape, and then anytime we curl in, one leg extends out, and then we switch, kind of like that. Okay, we're gonna go for 10. So take the, the shoulder lift, bring the arms to the hovering shape. If you're extending a leg out, take that shape and then lift the shoulders up. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good, grab back onto the knees, maybe knee, knee circles. Good. I'm definitely feeling my rectus of dominance right now, so probably you are too. Just a nice light burn right in the core. So again, you don't have to go any harder than that. If you want to take it to the next level harder, what you'll do is anytime you lift the shoulders up, you try to extend both legs out and then relax back in. So it's like shoulders and legs and return. Kind of like a little seesaw, like rocking motion. Okay, so choose, and again, you can do the last one we just did also, just one leg at a time or just stick with the first one. Okay, so lift up shoulders and begin. Here's five, four, three, two, one. Good, relax back down. Maybe some nice knee circles. We've got one more variation and you don't have to do it. So, so no, you can always back down. Let's take a breath for a few more moments. Okay, the last variation, if you want to do it, once we're up and pulsing, is to do straight leg switching. You kind of are trying to get, bring your torso in toward whatever leg is lifting up. So choose out of all the options I've given you so far, choose which one feels the best at this point with how you feel in your core. And then lift up head, neck, and shoulders. Bring the arms ready. Maybe the legs need to prep. And then begin. <sighs> Five, four, three, two, one. Amazing work. Plant the feet, let the hands clasp behind the back of the head. Lift the head up with the hand straight. And just let the neck, the back side of the neck, get a nice stretch. Sometimes it's nice to wiggle around, just letting the head go a little bit right and a little bit left. But if stillness feels better, just stretch through the next half of okay, too. And then as the head drops back down to the ground, let the right ear go over toward the right shoulder. So it's like there's a magnet drawing the ear closer. The left arm needs to imagine, you need to imagine somebody's pulling on the wrist, sorry, pulling on the wrist so that the arm gets pulled really far away from you to the left. So that makes it so the top of your left shoulder up to the neck, it's feeling really good, nice and stretched out. And 
then relax our head through the center. Just take a nice breath. Inhale. And exhale. And let's switch sides. Left ear close to left shoulder. And now it's the right wrist that's getting pulled out to the right side. Okay, relax the head back through the center. Just a nice even neck. Gonna take a few more breaths. Moving on to some new muscles groups in our body. Let's roll over onto our side body. You choose the side that just lets you see me better. We'll have that elbow underneath us. And the legs are brought forward just a little bit. Imagine here that your legs are a mermaid's tail, so you can't separate the legs from one another. So what we're going to try to do is lift both legs up and lower them down. We're gonna aim for 10. If you need to take breaks or you're, you're lifting up like an inch or whatever, it's okay. It's all just based on what strength you have. So when you're ready, we go up 10. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let the legs rest down for a moment. And then we're gonna switch it out. So we're going for 10 hip lifts. So now the feet stay down and it's the hips left that are lifting up and down. I'm gonna go for 10. If you need to take more or less, that's great. You choose the variation that feels good. So when you're ready, have, the, have your hands solidly in the ground. It's almost like we're forming a triangle shape with all these parts that are down. That helps give us, give us stability. Okay, so when you're ready, lifting up, 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Bring your mermaid tail in. Press into your hands to rise. And then grab your closer hand to the ankles onto the ankle. And then the other hand reaches up and away. So you'll need to put the other. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Switch our mermaid tail to the other side of us. We've got the first motion, which is the one where the both legs lift and lower. Remember, you don't have to go all the way through 10, so just do what you can. When you're ready, going up, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, take a break for a moment. If in the second part, you ever need to separate the feet just on the feet so that are on the ground, that is okay. So, so that's, that stability can be helpful. But when you're ready, let's prepare to lift the hips up, up to 10 times. So going for 10, nine, yeah, good variation, have the knees set up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Tuck the toes in. 
And then we're doing that up and over stretch to the other side. Rising up, let's swing the legs out in front of us. What we're going to do is hold in both toes as our arms are like I dream of genie, and we're just gonna go to one side and to the other side, nice and slow with every exhale is when we twist. Um, if the balance on with your toes lifted gets to be too much, you can always drop them down. You'll still feel it in your core so that you've got an option. Arms in place, maybe the balance, and exhale. Five, four, gotta take breaks. Three. Nothing wrong with that. So it's hard. Two. And one. It's all good. <laughs> Let's take cobbler. Oh, just let that head especially be loose so that it hangs over. One leg extends out, and what we'll do, you can flex that foot 10 times, try to pulse to it, and then go slightly away. So it's similar to what we we're doing on the ground. If it gets to be too hard, what you what you can do is just hold on to the legs and just, just use that grip and still do the same motion with the core. Okay? So flexing the foot, go for 10, nine, eight, it's okay if it's a game of inches, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Drop that right leg down. Slide this left foot in. Hook your right arm around it to take a twist. Turn the knee falls down, and then let's just take a nice stretch over the right leg. So inhale up, exhale over. Good. Let's take a breath. Use these moments of stillness to return back to gratitude. Sometimes it's like the gratitude is even. I've made it through more than half this class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. We're doing good. <laughs> okay, let's start to rise. We've got another side to do. So knees up together. And left leg tries to extend. Again, you can use hands or not. Try to inch closer to the toes and relax back down. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Drop left side down, slide right foot in, hook around the knee, take the twist. Good, return forward, the knee falls down. It helps stretch up. That helps to just straighten our spine. And then that straight spine gets really forward. Okay, 
Okay, so you rise and let both feet. One more time here. Let the hands behind you. And what we're going to do sometimes once we've lifted the hips up is bend the elbows and then press them straight. That gives us into a little bit of tricep strengthening. If 10 is too many, just drop the hips down the floor. So up, dropping down 10, straighten the elbows. Nine. Yes, the wrists don't like it, just don't even worry about it. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Just a simple cross leg position. So your right hand goes out in front. Peel back all the fingers and the thumb into a nice stretch. And then let release, let the fingers go downward and then peel back that way. As you release, open and close a couple of times first, and then maybe it feels good to start rolling the wrist out. Good. Second hand stop sign. Pull back fingers and thumb. And then release, fingers down, pull back that way. Release, open and close. And maybe roll it out. It's like we're creating space even within the wrists to have just a little bit more space for gratitude. Good. We got just a little bit more for the working stuff before we just get to stretch for the end. So let's work our way down onto our bellies. Our hands come into plant under the shoulders, but then we hover the hands. So they're about an inch above the ground. So from here, moving just the upper body, we're going to do 10 pulses up and down. That means toes are glued to the ground. So when we're ready, lift the upper body up, 10. Exhale down, nine. Inhale, exhale, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Rest one cheek down for a moment. Okay, get the head back to hover. This time, upper body stays relaxed and just the legs lift. Going for 10, inhale, and exhale. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Let's rest the other cheek down. Slide the arms out to left and right, a big T shape. This last set, everything's going to lift. So upper body and lower body lifts like a big airplane, and then lowers. Try to make it slow and really deep each time. So 10, be ready for the inhale. Exhale down. Nine. Eight. Seven. See if you can go, go higher. Six. Five. 
four, three, two, one. Good. Bring the hands into step and just rest the forehead down. This position, when the forehead rests down like this, brings the spine into a nice traction. All I want you to do is pay attention to the belly, breathing directly into the ground. A nice massage for all those internal organs. Let's head back into a child pose. Let the whole spine get a nice stretch. Pop the fingertips off the right edge, getting into the side ribs. Back to the center. Just a couple more breaths to remind the spine of this straight alignment. From here, let's lift up to downward facing dog. Spread the fingers, tuck the toes. Let's let the legs have that nice stretch upward. Movements or stillness, any of it's welcome, it's whatever's helpful. Remember, press down through every fingertip, every joint. That helps to relieve some of the pressure directly into the wrist. Good. And then we're going to step our right foot forward in between our hands. The back knee can gently drop down. Walk your hands up onto the thigh. And we do want to be sinking the hips forward enough that you feel the stretch on the front of the left hip. Yeah. Sometimes if the kneecap is having troubles, you can play, there's essentially three variations that you can take. Variation one, toes untucked. Variation two, toes tucked. And variation three is actually rocking forward so that you get onto it more of the front of the kneecap. So you can play with those three options and find the one that feels best for you. One more inhale here. Exhale, shift the hips back, straighten the front leg. And let's just take a nice stretch over that straight leg. Take this right leg back. Left will go forward if you want to go through down dog to get there, that's fine. Otherwise, just step left foot forward. Make sure your knee is at least comfortable to start with. And we're up to the thigh, sinking hips forward so we feel it on the front of the right side. and straighten it out, dropping hands down. Good. Let's come back down to a nice seated place. 
We're going to let our legs go open wide. So if you want to turn so your ankles are on the mat, that's fine. So kind of wide like this. Or if you're doing okay being forward, that's fine as well. Make sure that the feet, we have a second toe pointing up. So we're not letting it fall in or out. We're keeping enough activation that it stays that way. And then let yourself start to straighten the spine as we begin to walk forward. And it's okay if this is like one step forward with our hands. We'll be here for just a little while. So there might be space eventually to travel forward another step with our hands. Checking in with the toes, see if, they're, if they have a tendency to fall in or to fall out. And just see if it's possible to keep them upright. Now from this nice forward position, let's begin to walk our hands toward the right leg. Eventually one hand will end up on either side. Make sure left leg, we're not forgetting about it. It's not just drooping. Walk back through the center. And then over to the left. center. Let's take just a couple more breaths. Maybe we can go a little bit deeper by this point. And rise. Pick up the knees. Just come to a nice simple cross leg shape. The right arm crosses all the way over the body. The left arm hooks around to pull it in. And I like to get that right shoulder to drop down even head tilting away to create lots of space on the right side of the neck and the shoulder. Yeah, so right arm across, and the left arm hooks. Yeah. With our huge inhale, let both arms open up behind. Exhale, left arm across. Maybe the head drops to the right shoulder this time. Huge inhale to open. And then exhale, let the hands drop behind you. And we're gonna start walking them backwards until we feel our shoulder stretch. So, if you find yourself rounding and collapsing in the ribcage, that's going to completely take the stretch away. So try to keep the straight, rigid vertebrae and ribcage. And if you also need to make it harder, walking closer together makes it harder. Walking wider makes it easier. So a couple of spaces we can play with. Go for another couple of breaths. Good, walking back in, shake the wrist out. Okay, now resting the hands down, just let the head do half circles. So we go from one ear over one shoulder to rolling chin down to chest, and then other ear over other side. I don't like to go to the back space just because sometimes it crunches the, the vertebrae bones. But if you want to go just a little bit beyond the shoulder, that's fine. Just enough to give it a little bit of that neck. Good. Eventually rising back up. Then the legs out in front of you. Let's try to roll onto our back using the core. If you ever need to grab onto the leg to help for that last moment, that's fine. Good. Keep the knees under the chest. And just a nice simple twist. Both knees go to the right. The arms spreading back open. And 
then lift the knees up so they can head over to the other side. Feel all those back muscles that we worked getting length now. I like to make sure to stretch out after we work out because that makes, that ensures that we're getting some of that lactic acid stretched right out of the muscles. Okay, lifting back up. Set the feet down. Sometimes if our low back is, is having some issues right now, Shavasana is best with the knees just pulling into one another. Or you can choose to start extending the legs out long instead. So just find the Shavasana that feels good. And let's return to that idea of gratitude. Feel within your, your body, within the energy, within the cells themselves, feel the extra space that's now been made available because we did this class. Feel how getting the heart pumping actually creates more space for us to fill it with good energy. Feel how the open, stretched, and strong muscles are so willing to receive whatever intention we give it right now. So making sure to fill it with gratitude, let the beginning part of this Shavasana be simply listing a bunch of things that you're grateful for, one right after the other after the other. Eventually this will naturally turn towards silence in the mind and your Shavasana will be about stillness, but at least at first, go through at least five or 10 gratitudes you have so that you can feel the emotion of gratitude in your body as we're heading toward this comfortable relaxation pose here toward the end of our class.
the deep in the inhales and the exhales. Introducing little movements back to your fingers and toes, ankles and wrists. Stretching out like we're waking up first thing in the morning. Eventually taking a nice fetal position. And then your fetal position, take as many breaths as it as it requires to feel good. So maybe three or four, maybe five or six breaths, only coming up to the seated place when you're ready. With hands together in front of our heart, we check in with ourselves, noticing how it's almost like we filled our teacup up a little bit more full here by this time together. And we recognize that gratitude seems to pour more of that tea into our cup until eventually it's almost like we're overfilling with such gratitude, with such tremendous love for our life love for others and gratitude for all that life is providing for us. So with this overfilling cup to lead us on this marvelous day, let's wrap up the time we got to share together with the sound of OM. Inhaling now. May we be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Namaste.